They can uh, do all these things, but the reality is, the early church needs in a particular structure and what the belief system was, and that's the essential. But then there's a lot of non essentials, or there's gray area. So what ended up happening is everybody said, yes, we believe in these essentials, but then they would disagree on baptism of children, they disagree on other types of scripture. And they would have offshoots. So the major one is first you have uh, the, the one church. But if you look throughout the New Testament and read the epistles, you'll see that the epistles were letters to different churches, the Church of Corinth, which is the Church of Ephesus. And you'll see that there were issues that they were having. So they were trying to keep, you know, people and say, hey, it seems like you're getting a little. Uh, you know, lopsided over here, you're going down this path and that might be dangerous. These types of things, they were trying to control it. Well, that only lasts for so long, um, and then what you end up having is a rebellion. So the rebellion ended up being Protestantism or Protestant. They were, uh, in, in, in the early church, they were those that rejected some of the things that the church was doing and they branched off. And now you have Catholicism and you have Protestant, Protestantism with protesters. Right. And they split off and then you start getting groups that splinter through the race. You have ultra Orthodox Catholics, uh, you have more liberal Catholics, you have charismatic Catholics, and then you have Protestants of different shades as well. And it's all based on what separates them, not what joins them, because the essentials still pretty much stay the same, and you get people that are, are branching off or pulling away from one another based on regions, um, certain beliefs, certain gray areas in scripture, and it it's just human nature to do that. It's not God's plan, uh, and not the desire of God for there to be separation in the church. It's God's desire to have unity in the church. But humankind has a way of messing things up. Okay. So it's almost like, uh, to me, the way I'm getting it is, uh, let's say, for example, the early churches, like you pass a message, like, uh, I guess down down the line with ten, ten different people, you know, hey, how are you doing this morning? And then by the time it gets to that ninth or tenth person, it's like, how is Anna doing? You know, so the, the well, that's the old uh, telephone game theory, and it doesn't. It, it it it's not exactly the same case because you're not just dealing with oral tradition; you're dealing with a very meticulous uh, writing down, passing down of information. So by the time it, the early church started, you really have that structure already in place. It's more a it's where it's more where scripture doesn't speak that people have issues. So they start interpreting or coming up with conclusions, and someone says, "How do you come up with that conclusion?" They said, "Well, I did this, and uh, you know, uh, you have different scholars saying I think it means this, and others saying I think it means that, and they kind of split off. It's not so much a mutation based on a misunderstanding like the game of telephone. It's somebody mutating based on their own biased belief or lack of instruction from scripture. They kind of read into it and they say, I think it means this, and then they're willing to die for it or to defend it because it ends up becoming becoming their tribal interest. So the church has tribal interests the same way any group does in the world. People tribalize. They want to be a part of a group. And it happens with the church as well, and that's where you get all these different denominations. But the core beliefs still remain the same, which is why it's less of a problem than it might sound. Benjamin, welcome to the Jesus Christ Show. Yes, uh, uh, hi Jesus. Uh, hi. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Um, I, I had a question in regards to uh, wearing a straw. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a member in my church who who loves to wear the cross, and he wears the cross with the uh, the image of uh, yourself okay. on the cross, or a nail to the cross, and the whole whole thing. And I, and I told him, I said, I said, do you feel comfortable, honestly, uh, uh, wearing the cross? 
He said, well, yeah, that's, that's the Christian in it. I said, well, think of it like this. Say your relative got murdered by a group of thugs like the Romans. And he got murdered, you know, pretty much for preaching the gospel, uh, which, which was a, a great and crime outside of the Roman law. Now, would you feel comfortable of putting your relative that was murdered on the cross? And he even, he got silent. He didn't have a like, breath back. He looked like he wanted to cry. Well, it's, a, it's an ugly image. The, the image, uh, there were two thieves that died on either side of me that day uh, uh, by the very same method. And there were many, thousands and thousands of people who were uh, killed by way of execution, by way of crucifixion. So it, it takes place. What, what I'd like you to see is that the expression of faith in that and the reason why something that's so horrific becomes uh, a point of glory to many and uh you know a lot of uh, our catholic brothers and sisters wear crucifixes and there's a lot of uh, uh of our protestant brothers and sisters that prefer not to that, that don't they if they wear a cross the blank cross it's not a crucifix with the the actual uh corpus christi the the, the body of christ on it so uh it's personal taste but really, the, the belief is the same. Some people say the empty cross is where, is, is where the glory is. Ultimately, if you want to wear something that shows the glory, it would be the empty tomb, not the cross at all. But the process, the blood shed on the cross and the death on that cross is what brought that glory that you experience today via salvation. And if somebody wants to wear a cross with uh, the crucifixion on it, um, so be it. You are listening to the Jesus Christ Show. To ask your question, dial 800-520-1534. Why would a plumber just tell me what it costs to unclog my drain over the phone? Is it that complicated? No, it's not. It makes no sense at all. They obviously have a price. Whoa, you've got a nice aroma. Who are you? Mike Diamond, the Smell Good Plumber. Will you tell me how much to unstop my drain? $99. But you haven't seen it. Don't need to. Doesn't matter if it's a kitchen sink or a mainline sewer stoppage. The Smell Good Plumbers at Mike Diamonds will unclog almost any drain for $99. Almost? Yeah, there are a few exceptions, but you can read all about them on our website before you call. Just go to thesmellgoodplumber.com. Wow, you're like up front and everything. I just called a guy named Bubba who wouldn't tell me anything. No Bubba's here, ma'am. Just professional plumbers who show up on time, smell good, and unclog drains for $99. Call us. 1-800-446-MIKE. Contractor license number 39970. Hey, you missing teeth? There has never been a better solution for replacing all of your missing teeth. You're down to gums. Cunning Dentist has changed the game with their new permanent teeth in a day procedure. Created in their on-site lab, they pioneer dental prosthetics like nobody else. Now you can have new permanent teeth in a day that are completely lifelike. They feel natural, they look natural, and you can bite them too, just like you used to. No other product comes close. Technology exclusive Cunning Dental at, at a competitive price. Other products from other places are heavy, plastic, they are not Say goodbye to all the dental drama. Cunning Dental. Get $1,000 off your procedure. This offer expires January 31st. Get a free exam, x-rays, and CT scan worth $1,500. They have no money down payment plans. Call 888-640-SMILE. 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 Homeowners who have not refinanced are leaving a ton of money on the table. Make sure you're not one of them. It just takes a quick call to American Financing, America's home for home loans. You'll get a free, no-obligation mortgage review. No pressure, no upfront or hidden fees. Just a simple conversation around ways you can save up to $1,000 a month, all without starting your term over. That's right. They can do any term 10 years and over. And you may be able to postpone two mortgage payments, creating even greater upfront savings. Imagine what you can do with that money. Then pick up the phone and call American Financing. They're open now, and they're open nights and weekends. So they're always available when you need them. 800-777-8109. That's 800-777-8109. 
877-8109 or visit AmericanFinancing.net. American Financing, NMLS 182334, NMLS, consumeraccess.org. On 9-11, 2,977 people were killed in terrorist attacks on American soil. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation has been supporting America's heroes and their families ever since. When a first responder or military service member doesn't come home, a young soldier is left behind. Take command of the road in the 2011 Acura MDX. The 2011 MDX features an all-aluminum V6 engine that is both powerful and fuel efficient. Acura perfected each and every component on the exterior surface. An attractive stance is achieved thanks to alloy wheels glistening within the fenders. The seven-passenger MDX has doors that open wide for easy entry and exit. The power tailgate opens with a touch of a button. You can rely on ultra-bright xenon headlights to keep the roadway illuminated. Premium leather seats provide maximum comfort, wrapping drivers and passengers in a shroud of luxury. Acura prioritized comfort and style by including a blind spot monitoring system, XM radio, optional rear entertainment system, and seat memory. With split folding second and third row seats, the MDX offers a wide variety of passenger and cargo combinations. The available Acura navigation system features a new display and voice recognition system with continuously updated traffic and weather information. Acura also prioritized safety and security by including brake assist, a panic alarm, and four-wheel disc brakes with ABS. The super handling all-wheel drive technology enhances cornering and maneuverability. The rear view camera activates when you engage reverse gear to assist when parking. The 2011 Acura MDX, both practical and stylish. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I have the rest of Make exclusively by Piaz by Piaz by Piaz Piaz Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Daddy is sleepy. Huh? Is Daddy sleepy? Daddy is not sleepy. He wants to take you to the Eden Candy. No. That will be sad. He is scared of Eden Candy. Yeah, yeah, yes. Ah, Eden Candy have monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. How about the downtown? No. That's it. No. This is similar to the ones by the other times too. Yeah, sorry, sorry for the first time. Sorry, 
is a 1995. Mm-hmm. You're Yes, Jay. Disney. Oh, 
Quarry Ray. Song Master. Disney. No matter where you're going, you will never see this trash action for you. Feature films, Toy Story. Feature films. <laughs> hey. Hey. This bear Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Power truck, close in the sand. Power truck, see. Power truck, close in the sand. Power truck, see. 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 This is the time because it is the same.
No. Praises to your beautiful time of this is Right here. 
Amen.